Well, welcome to season number two of our Future Pro YouTube channel. We've covered a lot of funny stuff, a lot of teaching stuff, some goofy stuff I probably shouldn't have done, but this season, we're really gonna dig deep. We got a bunch of new material for you and you're gonna love it. Today we're going to give you a couple drills to improve your play with pucks loose around the net, covering up hunger and whacking away loose pucks. As well, Josh is going to show you some warm-up drills that you can do around the crease with simple crease movement drills, a theme that's going to be carried out through all of our episodes this year. Here we have the five puck smother drill. Goalie stands mid-crease, shooter out in front, pucks are numbered one to five. The whole premise of this drill is to generate hard covering up hunger skills. You can see here, blocker side, you can use the hassock to try to smother the puck with your blocker if it's closer. Always, if you have time, you always want to use your trapper. And the key is snap that glove down, seal that puck up, and get hunger in practice so that in games you're not sitting there staring at loose pucks. Josh does a great job of quickly reaching, smothering the puck, and then sealing it with his stick. Excellent job. This is the five puck whack drill. Same type of premise as before. You set up five numbered pucks, coach calls the number, shooter tries to whack in the puck that's called, and the goalie's just gonna take some aggressive swings at the puck. Now, I don't want you being risky and lunging and diving and going for pucks you're not gonna get, but this is where we generate habits. This is where we generate explosive stick skills and prevents pucks from getting in the net. And remember, sometimes the best save is the one you don't have to make. we see Josh executing a nice movement drill, a great warm-up drill. You step out on the post to the short side angle, two powerful precise shuffles, drive your knees with violence and then slide to the back door. You notice a couple key attributes of things he's doing well besides the knee drive. He's keeping great stick discipline in the five hole when he slides, he's projecting his glove blocker as he slides over and he's also looking and pushing in the direction he needs to go. Super drill, great warm-up drill to get you ready to play your game. Last one. Stanley Chapman. Where do you live, Stanley? Uh, Flushington, Ontario. And uh, who's this guy over here? Paul Chapman. Paul Chapman? And who is he to you? Dad. Your dad? And why do you play goal? I don't know. Because I just thought it would be cool if I did it with him. Right, so your dad was an influence on you becoming a goalie? Pretty much, yeah. Well, I grew up in Flesherton and I played a lot of hockey. I didn't play goalie until I was maybe in Adam or Pee Wee. Yeah. And um, played a lot of rep hockey there and around the area. but. I actually got into snowboarding pretty seriously by the time I was in my early teens and that took me on a eventually professional journey. So hockey, it, hockey took a back seat at the time so it's amazing how you change over time because now I enjoy hockey as much or more than anything but um, I, played, I played hockey until, until I was in my mid-teens, maybe 16 then I didn't have time to do both at a high level. So I did professional snowboarding until I was in my early 20s and I got back into goaltending when I was in my mid 20s, maybe mid or late 20s, and I've played two or three times a week ever since. So I think I did a lot of my improving as an adult as well. So my journey's been a long one. Paul, when you were a professional snowboarder, to do anything at the highest levels, there's normally some things that translate to other sports. So what would be some of the things that you learned in your journey as a professional snowboarder that allowed you to, to translate into the hockey goaltending environment? One thing that comes out, and we see this theme more and more, in sports today is the mental side of the of the position. Whether you're a race car driver or a golfer or a goalie we, or, or, or a skier or a snowboarder, focus and concentration, um, confidence, uh, visualization, these things are all really important. And I think I figured that out over time and it's become a lot more prevalent in the last number of years, but I think and the maturity required to be a good goalie and the confidence required to be a good goalie. I think I learned that. It was very similar. So Stan, when you, um, when you play goal, do you get nervous? Sometimes, yeah. 
how does he tell you to stop being nervous or what are some strategies you use to manage your nervousness? Uh, sometimes he'd say when he's nervous he plays better and then sometimes that makes me feel a little bit better. So you know that if you're nervous and you recognize that you're nervous you're likely going to have a good outcome because in the past that's the way it's been so you're not really afraid of being nervous it's just something you know to, to manage and know it's going to end up well. And you feel nervous because this run matters what were you able to do to get yourself into the moment and not be a person that lets nerve affect your, your performance? And realize that your preparation is what got, what, what, what got you here. And I think the, one of the most interesting lines that I've heard is, I believe somebody was, uh, I forget which reporter was, we had one of Floyd Mayweather's fights a while ago. This was maybe 10 or 12 years ago. And usually a fighter won't let you in before Right, right before the fight, of course, because it's you know 30 minutes prior to ring time for them, and um, he was, I guess, watching TV and said, "Of course, come in and let's 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 chat." And the and the and the reporter asked him, "You know, why are you not more nervous in your preparation?" He said, "Why am I going to be nervous? The fight's already been won or lost. Um, it was all in the pre preparation. I just have to go out there and do what I do now." I find that I'm not I don't play properly or well until I'm at operating te temperature, which. So I, I, I would go out and do a, a, a short run or something prior to that. But in a normal game, uh, in a normal pickup skate, uh, yeah, I just find that you just got to know your limitations and not go too crazy um, in the first few minutes of the game <laughs> before your body's warmed up. I think what happens typically in most beer leagues and rep hockey is guys just, you know, 20 minutes before they head to the rink, the gear's probably not even been out of the bag, they show up at the rink, they get dressed. The goalies tend to always come out in rec hockey after everybody else is out there warming up the crossbar. And as soon as they show up, everybody's like, okay, let's start. So you've got no static stretching, your body's not up to temperature. I think that's great advice. That you've got to get things up to temperature, and then if you have time to static stretch or do a little work with balls, it might help. But generally speaking, that's not there. One of the things he values about your coaching style is that you remind the students to keep things simple at the end of the day. Um, what type of gear are you wearing? Recently I just changed from CCM to Bauer. And you like the Bowers? Yeah. Now I'm a bit of a goalie nerd, gear, gear, gear nerd I should say, and I pay attention to it just because I obsess over the position so much and every, I think all of us have a soft spot for you know new stuff and cool stuff. There's so much great stuff out there. I don't think there's any brand right now that I would consider better than the other. Although I do love Vaughn. Right Mike? All right. That's it. Are you going to stop any parts today when we go up the ice, Stanley? Are you going to stop any? A few. And last question. <laughs> uh, who's the best goalie in the family, Paul? Dad. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, that was some great insight from Paul and Stanley Chapman. Being a pro snowboarder or being a professional in any athletic endeavor certainly teaches you things that can apply to be a goaltender. And there were some great things that he talked about today in that interview, if you're paying attention. Number one was how you handle nerves. And typically, if you've prepared properly and you've done all your due diligence to prepare, you have nothing to be nervous about. You just have to go out and play. And he used a good anecdote about a, a boxer in that situation. And the other thing I really wanted to take away is related to beer leaguers. And he said something very important. You all know what happens as a beer leaguer. You don't get proper warm-ups. You show up there and you're thrown out to the wolves. And the thing that he mentioned was you got to get up to operating temperature. So at the very least, beer leaguers, which I'm one of, let's try to go out for a little bit of a jog, power walk or something. Get your heart rate up. Get your muscles loaded before you just show up to the rink and try to play. That'll prevent injuries and that'll help you play your best and drink more beer after the game.